From the Asgard Company Studios in beautiful Wichita Falls, Texas, from the finest mind in the modern fitness industry, the one true voice in the strength and conditioning profession, the most important podcast on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, starting Strength Radio. Welcome back to Starting Strength Radio. Uh, we are here on a Friday, and Friday is here with us. Isn't it amazing how I come up with that every week, say something stupid about Friday? Just the talent I've got. We're here today with our friend Chad Lampy. Chad is uh, uh, is driven up here from Fort Worth to be with us, and let me explain a little bit of the situation. We are, if nothing else, we are topical here at Starting Strength Radio. Chad's firm. Chad's an attorney. What's the name of the firm? Norred Law. Norred Law. And he works for Norred Law. Norred Law is the firm that represented Shelley Luther in the recent situation that has traveled around the world. I think it's probably safe to say everybody knows about the Dallas salon owner at this point who reopened her shop because all of her uh, stylists were not making any money and she wasn't making any money and she decided to open up in spite of uh, a dubious order and we're going to talk at length about this today. Uh, judge threw her in jail and fined her a bunch of money. And, uh, she stayed in jail a couple of days, I think. Two days. She stayed, stayed in jail two days before somebody got their head out of their ass and let her out. Um, I said at the time on the thread that we've got going about this, that this girl is a hero. She's got far bigger balls than any of the city officials in the city of Dallas, and uh, uh, I'm glad she had the balls to go first. Somebody has to go first, and we're going to talk about this at length today. Chad, thanks for driving up. Um, What I want to talk about today is the fact that this is going to happen again. It is unavoidable that this is that this is going to happen again. Uh, It may happen this October. It may be that they wait a couple of years until another new disease comes around. But we have shown them what we will do for them if they tell us that it's for our own safety and make us afraid enough. We will lay down on our backs and roll over and show them our belly because we did it very, very thoroughly this time. It is, uh, it's a damn shame that the land of the free and the home of the brave has become what it has become because people are scared and are more concerned about security and safety than liberty. Now, this is high-minded libertarian shit. I understand that. But there are a few of us to whom these things are still important. And uh, Chad shares our, our belief in this, and uh, he's done good work at the firm for these types of cases. And uh, since this is going to happen again, what I thought we would do today is spend some time talking about the laws that are in place or the absence of laws that are in place that gave local politicians, and by local I mean state, county, and local officials, the, uh, the authority to have the power to shut our businesses now. Um, Chad, what the hell has happened here? Well, I think they've taken a uh, post-Katrina law and on the fly just— Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina. Um, The local—when it comes down to a local level, um, 
the gov- Texas, at least in Texas, you know, I, I can't opine about other jurisdictions because I'm only licensed to practice law in Texas. Um, we have Texas Local Government Code um, 418. Um, that talks about the, gur- the governor's emergency powers, and as well, it discusses um, our county judges, which no one, no one probably knew who their county judge was before, until, at least in Texas, until all this stuff. People say, <laughs> yeah. county judge, what is he, listening to criminal cases? No. no the no, county no, no. judge presides over pr- the commissioner's court. Um, it's not your typical judge um, like you'd it's, have. It's not a judge. Right. It's, that's the title, yeah. but that's not the function of the, of the elected official right. in that capacity. So, and even mayors, you know, you have, uh, like in the city of Cleburne, um, you have these mayoral, mayoral pl- proclamations where, hey, um, we only can have one person going into Walmart at the same time. And so there was a individual, uh, a married couple, walk into Walmart, the deputy marshal down there, knows them because he's known them for years and says hey what are you doing here they get you know the 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 guy you know, pushed back and said hey but he ends up citing them gives them a thousand dollar citation for going in together yes now meanwhile there's families there everything else but he specifically knew these this couple um because he, he'd known them for years and he didn't so, like them did he i don't know if he didn't like them but he he put on his Apparently. facebook you, you can go on his facebook um track mm-hmm. him down go on his facebook and he talks about i'll cite whoever i need to cite because if that <laughs> saves one life um, it was that's, one life. Yeah, you know, citing some a small family. It was worth it. Thousand dollars, definitely going to save a lot. Yeah, absolutely. But that's where that's where they're saying that they have this authority uh, is 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 four eighteen. It talks about you know the ability to shut down and, and what it was meant to um, to do is that if we have a hurricane come and just trash a neighborhood, there's malaria now there, there's broken beams, all that kind of stuff. We can evacuate those areas. Okay, this doesn't mean that okay. Um, the liquor store gets to stay open, but next door the barbershop has to close down. Right. That is, it's nonsensical to where you get to pick and choose that, um, okay, now the restaurant needs to close only for takeout. Um, this, it, it's, it was, what it was designed for, it's been grossly misapplied. Um, and I think what we're going to be seeing is a challenge to um, their ability to do that going forward. I think we'll see several challenges to their ability to do that going forward, don't you? I think sooner than later. <laughs> yes. Uh, in, in Texas, uh, and I don't know if other states are this way, but the, the county judge in the state of Texas is the, is, the, is the top official at the county level of government. Uh, the commissioner's court in Texas operates the county in terms of budget and law enforcement and Doing they usually run stuff. the jail the county jail they run they're in charge of the courthouse uh so the the county judge is the is the head essentially administrative official mm-hmm. in addition to having some uh executive capacity too is that yeah. is, is that a fair assessment, yeah, of, the, fair assessment. Of, the, of the county judge does the county judge have any legislative ability no, not actually. No, uh, Isn't that <laughs> lately they they seem to have a lot of it. Um, Isn't that interesting? To where they can they seem that they can extend um, orders longer than the governor says, um, and that they can make them more restrictive. Um, it, it seems to be that it's Katie bar the door. I'm in charge here. Um, is is the attitude that a right. lot of the it's not what take. you would call then rule by law. It's rule by county judge. Yeah, it's fiat. Right. It's a, st- a stroke of a pen to right. where, you know, um, and there was there has been some pushback already. But, you know, when the first uh, Dallas or Tarrant County has been following Dallas as far as Dallas will do something. And then um, the county judge over there in Tarrant County is you'll see that Glenn Whitley is his name. Um, you'll see the orders change. So one of the first ones that came out that was quite shocking was the that we may that the, the county may. Um, uh, sequester property and commandeer private yes, property. Commandeer was commandeer the word private in property, the document. Which yes. you know, um, commandeer. Pri- now let that sink in just a minute, okay? We have a disease comparable to the flu. There's argument that we could that you could probably make that it's more severe than the flu. There's also an argument that you can make that it's not as severe as the flu since. More than 50% of the cases are asymptomatic. There seems to be a very narrow group of people that this COVID-19 virus does extreme harm to. These are old people who are also sick. Now, 
we got the got the numbers on that, but we're not concerned about the disease itself. What we're concerned about is an order from the Tarrant County judge that said that in order to implement his decisions about how to manage this crisis, uh, paragraph three of that order said that they could commandeer private property. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Does that mean that if you have an empty uh, commercial space and I need a hospital that I can take your commercial space and fill it with patients? What about if I have a gym that's not empty? Can they take it and fill it with patients? Or can um, can they use it so that the, the police force can work out? I don't know. Um, can they, if you have excess vehicles taking around, does that mean we can commandeer property? Well, um, it was used at least in one instance down in Harris County. There was an auctioneer. He had N95 masks. Mm-hmm. So he had an open auction. Um, mm-hmm. Other fire departments and everything were bidding on those. This made the paper down there. Um, and they, I think they were going for $100 a lot. I don't remember what the size was. I don't know if it was 10 masks or whatever the lot was. Mm-hmm. But it was capitalism right he put them out there that's his business was auctioneering it has been from day one Um, in other words people are making bids on this in other words people are assigning their version of what the thing is worth to the product because that's what an auction does correct it's it's a a direct measurement right of what the market will pay for a commodity so he's working with the attorney general on this he's working with the county and then all of a sudden um, when he had struck a deal i think there was a deal struck to sell it to fema um county judge signs an order commandeers it so the county officials show up take a a tractor trailer full of n95s just seized the property stole the man's money now i don't know on the tail end if there was some kind of compensation that was paid but however they well it doesn't make any difference now, does it? Well, it's not going to, I would imagine it's not going to be, there's a good chance that it's not going to be a fair market value, right? I'll bet not. I'll bet not. Because had it been a fair market value transaction, they would have just paid them and everybody would have been happy, right? But no, in this situation, commandeered meant that men with guns, and let's be very clear about what this means. Men with guns came and got the man's property from him. Right? Correct. And, you know, in the final analysis, the government is men with guns. Always. You know, I, it, it just, I, I'm sorry, that's what the government is. The now, government is the, is the monopoly on, on the application and use of force. They are the monopoly because their court system upholds this. And we're going to talk more about that later. But. So there was pushback. So we do have a, a, a county attorney, uh, Matt Mills, down in Hood County doing good work, and he pushed back and wrote for an attorney general's opinion. Attorney general opinion, opinions are, they're not, uh, it's not case law, but it is persuasive. So they did come back uh, recently, Kim Paxton came back and said that the section uh, 418.108 does not authorize a county judge, mayor, or municipality, or any other local government official to commandeer private property to respond to a disaster. So we've already seen that. That's so in his opinion, back. the Tarrant County document was. And you've seen in later reversions that that's been removed. You know, that was an initial. Ah, it, okay. It's been back. They, they backpedaled on that. Just like on all of this stuff, there's been things that have been given and been taken away. And then, oh, hey, you can go to jail. Wait, wait, wait. Now we're not going people, throwing people in jail. So right. political I put pressure that is first moving. version up. The first version of that order I, I put up on our big long thread we've got going on the q and a at startingstrength.com right now if you go to uh mark ripito q and a there's a uh, we're up over 400,000 views on this thing so far and uh it's been real busy and i've been covering it real real intently every day and putting links up and there's a whole bunch of information in that thread if any of you're uh interested in uh looking at how this thing has evolved since march uh, the thread's been going since then, and that was one of the first things that I saw was Tarrant County was going to commandeer property, and I thought, well, now, how is this going to actually work? What, and, and back to my original question, what law passed by a legislature and signed into law by the governor gives Tarrant County the authority 
to walk into my gym and say, you, the fuck out. This is our gym now. We're commandeering this, right? What what are they operating under here? Well, on the front end, they'd go back to 418. Um, I think all these underlining executive declarations, um, my opinion is they're unconstitutional. They're, they're unconstitutional according to the Texas Constitution. The Texas Constitution actually talks about disease. What do we do in the event of a pandemic? Uh, Article 4. What, I bet there aren't many state constitutions with that kind of I would foresight. be highly surprised. Um, but what the process is, is that the governor should call a special session. All the legislatures go down to if, if Austin is so full of disease you can't meet there, they can meet somewhere else. They can have, you know, the next uh, le- whatever government on the Brazos or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, Washington. Washington on the Brazos. On the Brazos thank you. Right. Texas history was seventh grade. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yes, they can convene the legislature. They can make laws, and we can go through this process. So I think there's going to be less pushback, and it's going to be a lot harder to uh, to fight that if they were to go through that process. So let's talk about that process. That The provision states that in the event of a pandemic, it specifically refers to disease. Provision, uh, pr- uh, prevalence of disease threat. A prevalence of disease threat. Correct. Then a procedure is detailed that should be followed. Yeah, it's a may. It's not a shall. In the law, we have may and shall. So it says the, government may, uh, the governor may. May. On extraordinary occasions, convene the legislature. Since the Texas state constitution has a clause in it that specifically refers to uh, disease, and details a procedure that is that may be followed in the event of a disease. The absence of the exercise of that clause could be construed to mean that any action taken in the absence of that procedure is in fact unconstitutional. Yeah, um, correct. The there's we we have our Texas Bill of Rights right we have we have one in our U.S. Constitution we also have one uh, in the Texas Constitution. Um, one of the things that y- if you if you recall recently, um, Governor Abbott said that he's suspending certain sections of 418 because he wanted to take pack, back power from the local government officials, which is interesting because section it is interesting section 28 says suspension of laws, no power of sus- suspending laws in this state shall should be shall be exercised except by the legislature. Not the governor. Not the governor. When this whole thing started, I was proud of Abbott. I thought that he was going to be strong in the face of a whole bunch of of peer pressure from other governors, you know, waving everything around in the face of, of, this, of this opportunity to grab power. And uh, I thought he would probably do the right thing and do as little as possible to manage this thing. And that lasted about four days. And then he rolled over on his back, just like all of them, and said, yeah, we're locked down. I, that was disappointing. That was that was very disappointing. You know, I, I think initially when you when, if you have something that's coming in, I think there, there's a grace period, right? If if there is some unknowns on the beginning, if it's a week, if it's seven days, you know, with these with 418, the these declarations by the local officials, is, there's a seven day period, and then it has to be backed up. Um, so I, I you know, I'm not going to fault somebody for jumping the gun and say, hey, we need to do this right now, but. As information comes in, as time passes, and you see that this isn't, we're not filling up any of these filled hospitals that no. we're building. Uh, we're not filling up any of the permanent correct. hospitals that we, we're not run- that we cleared out. We are not being overrun by this thing. Then no. it's time to, and you what, then you start seeing businesses that are just going out, um, bankruptcy filing starting. Um, the you got to look at it and say, okay, you know, I think people are so scared to be the politician that says, you know, oh well, you didn't do anything, so Nana died. Right. People die. People right. die every day, and people are right. going to die. Um, they're going to die from this, and they're going to die from suicide because right. someone put in 30 years to their business, and now it's all gone in, in, a, it's in six weeks. Right. Fatalities of despair, as they call them. Uh, yeah, there's always a, there's an account, there's an, always a calculation that, that grown ups have to do. And it's, and just it's a, not, it's not fun, but uh, politicians are, 
not really grown-ups. And we're going to talk more about politicians after a while. Because they're, they're showing us their ass. All of them are right now. If you're, if you're smart enough to look at it, they're showing you their ass. Every one of them is. So in the event that the Constitution had been followed and that in the event of a, of a disease threat, a session had been called, what should have taken place? Well, just like uh, we have, uh, we've had special sessions quite often in Texas. You know, I think there's been times we've had three of them for various issues tied up on property tax, abortion, whatever issue is is stalling it. So you simply call them, have all all the folks go down to Austin. If if they're saying that Austin is a hub, then you could pick somewhere else. We have a huge state. All the legislators go there. They go through the normal process. They have their committees. Um, they come is, into session. Right. There's testimony and, heard on for and and against. Um, the proposed laws, and it goes through the process that we have. Um, right. That is the way to do these things. And then laws are passed. Laws are and passed. And then the governor either signs them or vetoes Correct. the thing. But in the absence of that, all right, now this is a terribly important question. In the absence of that having taken place, by what authority does the Wichita County judge have the power to send a man to my gym, to make me lock the doors. In the absence of that legislative process that's detailed in the Texas State Constitution. Currently, they would argue government code uh, 418. 418. Right. And every state may have their own other kind of provision for emergency management, uh, but that's the current one that's on the books that has yet, that has not been challenged yet. 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 Well, no, that's an interesting word. Uh, are you guys aware of anybody that's going to be challenging the thing on that constitutional basis? Yes. Good. Now, the power part of this thing is interesting. All right. Every restaurant in the state of Texas just closed down. Every sit-down restaurant closed the front door. Now, how Papado survives this, I don't know. How Pappas Brothers, that's a big company with excellent food and excellent service and excellent restaurants, survives being closed for three months. I don't don't know. But they closed. They agreed to close. Had they not closed... What do you think would have happened? From a legal standpoint or from yes. a health standpoint? From a legal standpoint, I think if they're on the front end of this, if there would have been mass pushback, um, I think code enforcement would have got out there. I, I'm very reticent to say that a lot of, especially on the front end and even now, that a lot of police officers were super jived um, about going out and enforcing this. I, I know some personally that said they're not they're not doing this thing. I know some that have, yeah. have gone to calls and laughed at people, you know, wanting to, you know, find someone for not having a mask on. Right. Um, so I'm not going to paint a, with a wide brush saying that, hey, we have all these tiny tyrants out there doing that. But I, I think that code officials, people working directly for the city, um, were immediately willing to go out and force codes. Because that's, you know, they'll come and they'll find you for grass or having your recycling bin out uh, on a Wednesday or a Thursday when you're not, when it's supposed to be out on a Tuesday. So right. um, there is always people willing to, I'm just doing my job. We have only following orders. Correct. The Nuremberg defense. Right. Well, uh, so had Papado not closed, uh, somebody from the health department would probably have visited them. Code enforcement probably first. Code Pro- enforcement. Code, enfor- code enforcement. So is when code enforcement goes out, though, code enforcement is enforcing building codes and health and safety codes. This is not included in that body of statutory law. Correct. Yeah, they're going to or they're going to they'll have sometimes a city will pass an ordinance, right? And you, you know, you have a dog a dog. But when ordinance. the city passes an ordinance, people voted on the Correct. ordinance. Correct. And when it goes through the process. It and it went through the process so that my elected lots. officials right. vote the people that I sent over there to pass laws. And an ordinance is a law, right? Correct. I mean, there's no difference in an ordinance and a law. 
The city passes an ordinance. It's voted on by elected officials. Did that happen in Dallas? On the tail end, I think they tried to do it, but on the front end, no. On these immediate, on the when so all this stuff the came immediate down. shit they were enforcing was not. They were not enforcing an ordinance. No. When they're going through, when they're going down to Deep Ellum and they're going to vape shops, that at that time an ordinance had not been in place. When they're going to a when, but when they were closing them down anyway. Yeah. When one vape shop was narking on the other one and and going in there and saying, "Hey, you got to close down," there was there's no ordinance in place. It was going purely off the emergency declarations by the county judge. And the governor. And the emergency declarations by the county judge and the governor uh, were, in the final analysis, absolutely unconstitutional, weren't they? I think there's a strong argument for that. So, next time is coming along. Boys and girls, next time we'll be here. It may be here this fall. It may be a couple of years, but it's coming because... The government has given itself a very, very powerful tool. The government gave itself the power to declare businesses either essential or non-essential. Now, my question, Chad, is there any authority for that power? To declare which one's essential, which, which one, one is not. essential, and which one is not essential. I think it seems like fiat. You know, we're just gonna. It, it we're kind of smells we, like we, that. We gotta that, have we gotta have grocery stores, all right. Well, we gotta have people to get stuff. To, we have to have truck drivers, okay. We have to have police officers, um, you know. But if you have an office that is, you know, we got to we have to close you down for some reason. Um, churches. That's the fact that so I, many churches I, just. Rolled this, over rolled on over, their backs. Rolled over on their backs saying, oh, no, we don't have to congregate. Or, you know, yeah, that's, that's fine. We'll, we'll do it. On what's Easter. Best. Yeah. Uh, but liquor stores are open. Wide open. Uh, now, I'm, I'm not a religious person by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but I think most people have a problem with the government deciding... Who, especially if you put it in the context of churches versus liquor stores, I think most people understand the fundamental problem with this. But yeah, uh, to look at it more broadly, uh, we can go to Walmart and buy bread and lunch meat and cheese and mayonnaise to go home and make ourselves a sandwich. But I can't go to downtown Wichita Falls and walk in and sit down and order a sandwich and eat it. There are people, I hear them right now, I hear them through the the internet saying, what? You're being irresponsible. Well, you're, you're spreading disease. You're spreading disease by going downtown. And... You're forcing employees to get sick because you're sick and you're going to make employees sick. Forcing employees who apparently are slaves and have to come to work whether they want to or not. And uh, my, my opinion about this is, and I don't think this is wild-eyed libertarian shit, if you don't want to get sick in my gym, don't come in my gym. Okay? Nobody's making you come into the gym. Nobody's making you go in the sandwich shop. Nobody's making you go to work. If you want to quit, go ahead and quit. I don't think that's a particularly illogical position that challenges uh, a lot of common sense. But this is it, see the the assumption under this whole underlying this entire idiotic episode in American history, in the history of the world, is that everybody else is responsible for you. Correct. That's the whole thing. Everyone else is responsible for me. I bear no responsibility for me. If somebody gets me sick, it was his fault that I'm sick. Right. Well, if this is the assumption we're going to make right now, we don't really have much of a civilization to go back to certainly not in the western sense of of civilization 
it, it seems that immediately half of the people, you know, my friends, family members, um, immediately rolled over. That there is no, there's no optic of people looking through this and saying, okay, is this the right way to handle this? Is, is locking myself up in my house, preventing myself from going to work, ruining my business, uh, all on the sake of we might save some lives. Um, you know, let's not go to church because, you know, there's some people might get sick. And I'm totally fine with people want, if they want to stay home and, and go through that process. That's right. Obvious. But, but yeah, ob- obvious. It's obvious. just common sense. That's... But the the immediate lashback of, oh, there's there's two. There's the, the, the two biggest ones are you're going to kill somebody and why don't you care about people? Go ahead and tell them. You can tell them their parents are dead or whatever. Uh, and why aren't you following the rules? Well, that's the that's the biggest one is right. you should have followed the rules and the you, rules are right. Your business will be allowed to open when we say it's allowed to open. Now, why are you allowing my business to open now and not last week? Why am I not allowed to open my business until the end of November? You know, you realize that there are jurisdictions uh, around the country where the gyms have been closed until further notice. Sounds like a take. Five of our of, of starting strength affiliate gyms are out of fucking business as a result of that. Five good people out of work. Well, they, they can they can do it with a bunch of members. They were helping to make strong. They can go get an essential job. It's okay. Let them go get an essential job. Now I, guess, I know those are the, people are getting laid off and furloughed too. We're not going to talk about that. Oh fuck them. We're not going to talk about all these. I'm sorry. Being, fuck them because we're running out of money because <laughs> we don't have any taxes anymore. Because yeah, so the so the cities cities and counties are now worried about. Well, God, how are we going to pay for all this stuff? I mean, we don't have any sales tax revenue coming in. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have any sales tax revenue coming in well is it too unreasonable to suggest that perhaps you should have thought about that before um, god what is this they don't have any sales tax clip. revenue i should probably cut it for my safety oh yes Oh, God, sawing off the branch you're fucking standing on, right? I mean, you talk about, but <laughs> yet, survive the, these people have the balls to get on television and complain about sales tax revenue being gone. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, uh, uh, I, I don't know, I just, there's a lot of shit I don't understand, but uh, 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 what, what one thing I really do not understand is the motivation of of politicians most of the time Uh, i am not capable my brain doesn't work this way of stand of sitting here and telling you that for tomorrow the sun is coming up in the south But there is not a politician in this entire process that has not stood there and lied about every aspect of the whole situation they thought they needed to lie about, and it doesn't bother them at all. How do you take a third-rate piece of shit like Harry Reid and elect him to the Senate in Nevada and pay him a salary of less than $200,000 a year and let him sit in that chair for however the fuck long he was in there, 80, 90 years in the Senate, and have him get out of the Senate a multi-hundred multi-millionaire. How do you do do that? Well, you do that by understanding that when a politician goes into a situation like that, they will say anything they need to say to anybody to get done what they want to do. So you turn a run-of-the-mill sociopath 
into a powerful, rich individual by electing them to public office. Now, sociopaths are all over the place. We all know them. You may not know what they are, but you know people that you don't like that behave in a way that you don't appreciate, and what those people are are sociopaths. The government's full of them. Elected officials, almost to a man, are, are some degree of sociopathies involved in their, in their personality. Have you ever gone down to the Capitol the, in Austin and walked around? While they were in session? Yeah, walked around the halls. No. Do it once. If you have the opportunity to go down there, walk around. Breathe it in. Wear a suit. It's that sense of you, you get a sense of power being down there. And I think that's the biggest thing for somebody in that position. Why do they get into there? It must be intoxicated. It's not the money. In Texas, you know, Texas, you know, the, the state paid reps get, yeah, it's, it's 600 bucks or something. And you get yeah. some, a few. It's a, it's a token. It's thing. nothing. You don't right. get rich off of it uh, unless you decide to leverage that other on. So it's not about the money. Um, it's, I think, for a lot of people, it's about power. Um, now, and I know there, and I know there are they're some, inextricably some good, linked. Right. There's, there's no doubt. And, and there's people in there for good reasons too. Right. You know, we're, we're, I don't want to cast a, a broad brush and say everyone's nefarious, but that is a huge draw: is the ability to say, "Okay, cool, now I'm doing this." Well, um, you know, it's been my observation that the good people that go down there for the right reasons last one term, maybe two, and then they don't run again. You notice that same thing. I could point a few sec- a few exceptions, but then I can also. I think that's the the small. That's the on the. Uh, that's the exception, not the rule. Right. I mean, I, I know personally some uh, some folks down there that have been there for a long time, and they're they're there for the right reasons. They may not may not, they may not make the decisions that I would make, um, and they may make some that I think were wrong, and that it turned out in hindsight are wrong. Um, but I think that there are some people still trying to do the right thing. Really? Yeah, I, 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 I'm not completely cynical. Uh, I'm completely cynical. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. There's I'm a ray of cynical. hope that uh, is still within me that there are some people willing to fight, and we're seeing that. We're seeing that with people like Shelley Luther that you know are willing to stand up and say, you know, this started off with folks with vape shops that were, you know, mm-hmm. hey, you know, because you're not essential because you know even though you you sell consumer electronics, which is an mm-hmm. essential service. Um, but this startup with some, you know, someone that has the willingness to say, "Okay, I'm willing to go to jail for this," and that takes some, that takes some balls. Bottom line, sure. Um, I've been practicing for 12 years, and people faint out of of, re, of cases for various reasons. Most of the time, it's money. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's uh, threat of jail. Um, but the fact of, that you're willing to do that and make that's what so, I think that's what people are rallying behind because when someone is finally saying, "Okay, this is enough." Um, you know, it's, it's a figurehead thing because there are people, there's the stay at home crowd. Um, and when I say that, there's the people that think you just need to follow orders and you just don't need to even question that somehow questioning the authority is wrong, that we can't look at this through the lens of, is this constitutional, um, that we just have to blindly accept it, um, and not push back. That's not the American way. No. That's not how we got here. We push back. We look at these things. We think critically, we problem solve. We don't just roll over and say, oh, okay. Um, but I, but you know. Chad, I think what you what you mean when you say this is that it used to be the American way. Yeah. Because what is it, the exactly. new American way here in New America is to do what you're told. Do what you're told. When I see a 25 year old kid wearing a mask, a demographic that does not contract this disease, and as a result does not transmit this disease, it's, that'll be contested, but that's the, that's the case. Uh, I see somebody who's just doing what they're told. Right. They're wearing a mask. They're virtue signaling is what they're doing. Well, it's— I followed the rules. Right. You know, even, and even with the use and, of the gloves, you, you'll get a chili, is, and it's— this isn't, it's not the donning and doffing like you would in a medical. I went, I had to go to my doctor and they did the right thing. You know, they were doing, you take it off when you go, but they should do that anyway. Right. Because right. they got sick people in the office. Right. But when you, when you take somebody that's the hostess at Chili's and she's constantly messing with herself and they have these nasty gloves on and they're serving multiple people, it's, they have no training. Half of them have it down on their noses. Yeah. Um, 
it's it's, just, it's not an N95. It's just it's whatever. Just it's a bandana. Procedures they're following. Like yeah. you go through the airport. And it's go security the, theater. The TSA has got these stupid ass blue gloves on right. that they had on for the past two hours. Right. And uh, they want to look through your bag. You say, please change your gloves. And they look at you like, well, what's wrong with you? Please change my gloves. Why would I do that? Why would I change my gloves? Because I asked you real nice. Now just please do it. And, you know, they don't understand. They don't understand. They're just following a, a procedure that they have been told to follow. And the kid wearing the mask is doing exactly the same thing. Right. He's following a procedure that indicates he's following it. Mm -hmm. It's a very visible way to indicate that I care more than you do because you don't have a mask on. Now, you know, you say whatever you want to about that, but I'm telling you that's what's going on here. That's exactly what's going on here. And uh, before this is all over with, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that don't like a whole bunch of other people as a result of the way this thing has fallen out, you know. Uh, a whole bunch of people don't like Shelly. Oh, yeah. whole bunch, a whole of, bunch people, of salon owners don't like him. whole bunch of people she don't like She should have stayed her. home. She should have followed the rules like the rest of us. She should have gone broke like everybody else did. Exactly. Because it's the right thing to do. Right. Going broke is the right thing Stay to home, do. Stay home, get your $1,200, and shut up. Yeah. That's what she should have done. Because we're going to live off $1,200 for the next, you know, foreseeable. Hour and a half. Right. Right. Uh, and I'm glad she I'm glad she had the, had the balls to get this done because this is – she's uh, probably received death threats. I'm sure there are – We've had calls to our office, you know, guy, someone saying, oh, we want to meet with you in person. It'd be a bad day for that person, but whatever. If you want to come to the office, I mean, our address is on the website. Right. We're, um, we're sitting here right now. Yeah, we're come sitting here right now. Um, yeah, the, yeah. We, we don't well, want people to die, but I'm going to threaten you. Right. right. Well, now let's let's uh, let's talk about something really unpleasant, since we've already introduced a bunch of unpleasantness in here. Uh, it doesn't appear to me that there is a shortage of law enforcement people who will do the wrong thing. Now, I'll have to say that right now here in Wichita Falls, we've got a pretty good bunch of guys that work for the police department. We got a pretty good bunch of guys that work for the sheriff's department. These guys have gone out of their way to not do the wrong thing. I've talked to lots of them. And they say to me, this is all bullshit. We're not going to write people tickets for any of this. Right. It's just, I don't, I don't care what these people tell us to do. We're not going to do it because it's wrong. And, you know, and there's a, there's, there's a reason for that. There's two reasons for it. One reason is that these are actually good guys. You know, they're, they're guys we know, guys we train with, guys we train their kids you know, there's, there's, we, we interact with them. We know them. They're friends of ours. They're good guys. And B, they have to live with us here. Mm -hmm. They live down the street from us. They can't, they don't get to go back to Minnesota when this is over with. They live here and they have to live with the consequences of their actions, even if the elected officials do not. The elected officials do too, but they don't. They seem so drunk with the power right now that it's just another it's just it, another crisis to take advantage of. Yes, it seems to be. Uh, why do you think that tyrannical governments throughout the history of the world have never had a shortage of jackbooted thugs? That's a hard question to answer. I don't know if there is an answer, because I, I don't think that it, way. It's the most horrible question you can answer. Right. It's a horrible question to have to ask. Why would you? I got to, 
email, a, a text here from a buddy of mine, lives in Maui, said one of the malls opened back up and 10 of the stores in the mall are open and there's more police in the mall than there are customers. Measuring the distance between people. I was super surprised to see it here. Um, I'm surprised to see, you know, chasing down a, a wakeboarder, uh, how they did it. I, uh, someone in the middle of the ocean. A guy Let's endanger off someone alive the by getting beach, a 30-foot boat. Water. What? Did, and, and I think everybody knows about that incident by now. Uh, we've all seen the video of these guys seizing this poor fucker. He's out playing in the waves and shit. He's not bothering anybody. Yep. There's not another human being excited except the cops. Right. And they cited him. We got to make an example. You got to make an example. Comply. But what was he doing to make an example of? He was. But they did it anyway. Yeah. It's just, Chad. I don't understand. This. That first, I, that I first don't. domino to fall is is the one that they want. They're, they're going to fight the hardest to keep from falling. Because if everybody wakes up and realizes that, hey, you know, I can live my life. I can be responsible, uh, and I can do my own thing. Um, then they they lose control. And that's what Shelley's important for, isn't it? Yeah. It's first domino. We have people the calling crack in the wall. We have people calling us from North Carolina. I don't pra- we, don't, we can't practice in North Carolina. You know, we have we have three lawyers in our firm. In our firm, one does bankruptcy. You know, but why aren't this is and this is what's frustrating to me. There's over a hundred thousand lawyers in the state of Texas. that are licensed to practice. Whether you know, depend various types of things. How is it that there's a, a small firm doing this? Why right. why aren't there why aren't these other things happening in other states? Where are all these lawyers that took an oath to defend the Constitution? Not looking at these through this lens. Are they, you know, and, and it's not like, you know, business is slow for a lot of, a lot of, uh, I'm on the Texas Lawyers uh, Facebook page. There's 14,000 lawyers in there, and people are getting loans and stuff because business is slow. Um, some people are doing fine, but other people, it's slowed down. So uh, where is this, where is the resistance? Um, where are the people that should be able to think critically? I mean, that's all, that's, when you go to law school, you learn how to think like a lawyer. You don't mm-hmm. learn how to practice. you got to figure that out on the fly. But you learn how to think like a lawyer. You learn how to look at the statutes and say, hey, does this jive? You, you have access to the case law to look back and say, hey, is this thing? Um, but that fighting spirit is lacking. It's lacking around the nation, and it seems right now. Yes. Um, just with, within, in, with, within everybody. And it's regardless of the profession. Um, well, yeah, I've this whole sorry ass episode has, in a lot of ways, made me ashamed to be a human being. I mean, this isn't the way shit's supposed to be, you know. It's and, an. I think. Yet, I think recycling. Yeah, I think recycling is. back. You know. Who knows how long that we've been on this earth, right? We've had comic impacts, we've had tsunamis, disease, everything. Um, but this other, it's it's when I, growing up, and I think I, you know, I grew up in the '80s, and you had this picture of, hey, this is how America is supposed to be, and that's been completely eroded. You know, I did my time in the Marine Corps, um, did the whole, hey, you know, your duty, defend the Constitution, um, and this individualism, the individualistic ideal, has been eroded. Um, there's still an undercurrent of it, but the vocal, whether it's a minority, and I think it's getting closer to maybe evening out, um, because there's people that I thought in normal day life would be like, hey, and everything's great when, when all the stores are open, but as soon as there's a little, a little bit of problem, a little bit of difficulty right. in our lives, they shrink, they've shrunken back. It has taken two and a half months. Yeah. <clears throat> not a shot was fired. And not a shot was fired. And this is not only the most egregious blow an economy has ever uh, suffered that was not in wartime, but it is the most egregious transfer of power from American citizens to their government that has ever occurred in the history of this nation. And, you know, I was born back in the 50s and we were all taught you know land of the free home of the brave all that shit what's well, turned out to be bullshit we have rolled over on our backs 
and allowed these little petty fucks to run our lives for us. And they're going to do it again. They're going to do it again. You know they're going to do it again. If you don't think that they're going to do it again, you're a fool. You're an absolute fool because you just showed them they could. Now, what do you know about power? It makes you want more. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and this is, this is a, this is a horrible develop. It's, it's, you know, the economic disaster. I mean, as it turns out, economies are, are complicated, you know, how something like this can interrupt the pork supply. Right. You Let's know. kill all the this, animals. This, this is all, all of this. You know, you go on and on with example after example, and every single industry in the United States has been adversely affected by this because we, were, we allowed them to make us afraid that we were going to get sick. We're going to get sick. Right. Some of us, when we get sick, might die. Has it ever been any different? Yet this time it is. This time it is. And I'd like to know why. Why is it different this time? And I don't know that I can answer that question. It's the, I think part of it's mentality. Uh, people aren't trained to be mentally strong anymore. Um, that's looked at, the, the whole masculine. How did you and I get trained to be mentally strong and they didn't? I have no idea. Now what the hell? Providence. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, my, I wasn't raised in any kind of military household. Or, I wasn't or either. I just, my my I dad a, was in World War II. Yeah, my, my dad served, you know, he served two and, years in the Navy, but, I, you know, broken family. They were divorced when I was one, grew up with my mom, single mom, raised family. And so uh, the things that develop, you know, I don't know, I don't know how, it, I don't know where that split occurs. And, and, and like I said, I don't know if it's Providence or what it is. I don't know if it's genetics. Um, but here's the thing, the, the, the mentality of thing. Clay Jenkins had a another, he had his, hey, I'm going to get on the internet and tell you how to Clay stay Clay Jenkins, home. by the way, is the Dallas, Dallas County judge. Correct. So he's he trying to change. He's a powerful, the, we're talking powerful, about, powerful man. Talking about changing the mentality of, well, you know, you following these things, and I'm paraphrasing what he said, but that that's an act of bravery. That you do you staying home is an act of bravery. <laughs> Standing in solidarity oh, with God, the, the, the non-overwhelmed health care workers in Dallas. That's uh, that's an that's brave. That's you, that's what's brave now. You not getting your chemotherapy for your cancer, to make room in an empty hospital for a fictional COVID nineteen patient, is an act of bravery. That's brave now. That is stupidity, is what that is. That's stupidity. But that's what we have allowed people like this Clay Jenkins boy to tell us what is virtuous and what is not. Well, we already knew that, didn't we? Chad Clay Jenkins is probably there for the duration. All right. I don't know if there's going to be a – I would like to think. I would like to think. And, you know, generally when you hear the words, I would like to think that everything that follows after that is bullshit as a general rule. I'd like to think that this November that every single incumbent – politician that is up for election is going to be voted out of office every single one of them i'd like to th i'd like to think sure that you'd that like to happen. think that i would like to think that but that's not going to happen it's the secret if you if you think about it it'll happen right if you think about having a billion dollars it's going to happen yeah i just it'll, we, right. we figured it out so right. end of podcast right <laughs> yeah that's problem solved <laughs> <laughs> so given that what should happen is not going to happen right what are we going to do next time this occurs? And by next time it occurs, I mean every one of these local jurisdictions, state, county, local jurisdictions, says that, well, for your own good, you're going to have to become unemployed and stay at home and, uh, and cower in fear under the table in the kitchen. Right? What do we do? I know what I'm going to do. Right. But I'm what should happen in the event? Taking... What we know about what the actual authority in operation is here, what the actual authority at the state, 
county and local mm-hmm. level, what does and does not enjoy the force of law. And by law, I mean something passed by your elected representatives and and passed under a normal legislative process that that you've got some input in and that b- because your elected officials uh, went through the legislative procedure. Mm-hmm. All right. Something with the with the with the the imprimatur of the legislative process in the absence of that because that's what we got right now mm-hmm. when they come to us next time and says well you're gonna have to close your gym what do i do well that's assuming you're still alive and haven't starved to death um good point right so those that remain and survive this economic disaster that's impending um i would i'd hope that there'd be pushback I would. Uh, I don't think the law is going to stay the same way, at least in Texas. Um, who knows about the hinter- other other states, places that are just wretched, like California, New Jersey, and um, and all Maryland, that kind of, and New York. Where those 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 ships have long been given up. Um, but for places like here, where um, at least I have some some knowledge of, of what is going to be on the the next battle line. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that th- this pin is not going to be as mighty as it was uh, last time. So, you know, I encourage people to to think and to, to think to be individuals to to think about, hey, do I need to impoverish my family? Um, is what they're asking is it reasonable? You know, if this is a Walking Dead scenario and you know people were dropping like flies, we wouldn't be having this conversation. No, we wouldn't. Because so it, because it would be obvious what we ought to do. Right. But this situation is completely absent. Right. That black-white distinction, isn't it? Correct. Right. So what people should do is think critically. Uh, they should think for themselves and not act in fear. Uh, that's hard because fear is easy. Courage is hard. Um, to stand up and say, wait, and to question authority, which has been apparently pounded into people's head that, that well, we're not to question authority. And I'm not talking about anarchists and, and stupid stuff like that. But look at this stuff. Think. Read. Uh, the Constitution is uh, the laws are available online for free. Right, you can go through there and read them. Push. You can call your local representative. You can call your state reps. You can call your city council people. You know the the time to act is going to be at these elections. You know, as you as you said, it's, what what will happen? But that is what people should do now. What their immediate thing is. November is coming, um, and that should be a big push for at least this. I don't think there, any, anything's going to be a switch. There should be a bloodbath. Well, it, in November there should be yeah. an absolute political bloodbath people will get off of netflix if if they're not if there's not a political bloodbath then we deserve it yeah as as a a community as a community yes you know because then then we're just as a a society we just say we're a uh, that we then we just become a minority that thinks in archaic ways yes um so that's what that's what what, well uh in a in a more practical sense uh People like uh, Shelley Luther and myself have decided not to follow the rules. All right. Now, in Shelley's case, uh, it's turned out pretty well. For it's now. turned out pretty well for now. For now. Uh, she's doing fine. She was in jail a couple of days. She got out, and she's she's created a whole bunch of attention around the idea that maybe we shouldn't just do what we're told. Maybe we shouldn't just lay down, roll over on our backs. I, I, I don't know about you, but uh, when they do this again, if you're in a position like I am, to decide what to do. You need to decide the right way. Now, I can't make up your mind for you what's right, but I think you you should know that. I think you should know that. If people are being harmed by obedience to an illegal order, don't follow it. Because if you do follow it, you're back to the Nuremberg defense. I was only following orders. 
that got a lot of people hung, didn't it? It also resulted in a lot of people dying on the front end, right? In fact. Right. In fact. We were only following orders. If they order you to close, well, I know what I'm going to do. Chad, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Chad Lampy has been with us. And, uh, you know, these are, things are pretty fucked up right now. And they're not through being fucked up. And they haven't got as fucked up as they're going to get. So, uh, as always, you have the ability to think. Please exercise that ability. Use good judgment. And we'll see you next Friday here on Starting Strength Radio.